So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay and to another custom scenario. This time we're going to be returning to a more familiar face of scenario creation in Eclipse 2500 of the Dark Cloud. Albeit this time I think WK needs a special mention as well because I believe he is the one responsible for adding in some more Dwarven assets to the game which can be used by everyone. And this settlement is going to have several of these assets including, as you can see, this rather decorative Dwarven flooring. There are also a few other things as well, I believe these darker statues here that wield the axes are a new asset, and I think some of these buildings are a little bit different as well. So yeah, more stuff for people to play with. And this is a bit of a theme because I think there was another such asset pack as well which was for the Northman, or the Wildman, or, or something along those lines, which was also really so good to see a little bit of variety being added in that sense. But yes, a Dwarven settlement and a rather imposing site that it is as well. And you can see here that it does have the tiers going on. It actually reminds me somewhat of one of the Warhammer settlements in a good way, in the sense that you have it built into the mountain, it has this layout which seems somewhat familiar to me. But again, Warhammer of course has got other mechanics going on, which means the settlement layout itself actually counts for rather little. Whereas that will not be the case in Medieval 2, the attackers will have to make their way through this settlement the old-fashioned way without any tricks up their sleeve. But we'll go through the settlement in a little bit more detail in just a moment. This time it's going to be Khazadum, which are on the defence. We saw Erebor try to defend Moria not too long ago. That was, of course, the replay that had quite a lot of mechanical issues. Hopefully they don't rear their ugly heads once again, because this is probably the most demanding battle I've done since then. But based on the last scenario that we did in the Guathlo Valley, I don't believe that will be an issue. Let's hope, anyway. So, let's go through the attacking armies first of all before we get our teeth stuck into the settlement good and proper. Starting off with WK himself, who I believe, once again, is responsible for at least a portion of the work that went into this one. So, he's playing as the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, the old enemy of the Dwarves, and he's got some heavy Goblin Spears, which are a nice unit to have against the Dwarves, because they're decently... They'll, they'll do decently on the front line, they can hold a line for longer, at least in the standard infantry, and that armour piercing does push them above and beyond the infantry against more heavily armoured targets, even when they're fighting in melee against other infantry units. Black Orcs of the Mountains, they've got obviously a nicer amount of melee defense and base damage, much more hub. The Uruk units in general for the Misty Mountains are of a higher quality than the Goblins, as you would expect. Two units off the Black Uruks there, more heavy Goblin spears at their disposal as well. Several units of heavy Goblin infantry, as you'd expect. This is a 5v3 after all, so the attackers are going to have to rely very much on numbers, and we shall see if they have enough numbers to try and subdue this stuff. The Dwarves are fantastic at holding a line, of course, but the Goblins are fantastic at seemingly having limitless resources in battles like this. They can just keep going and going until the enemy finally relents. And the Heavy Goblin crossbows are one unit which Khazadun will really want to be dealing with and not allowing the Goblins to keep until the late game, because that stopping power, that armor-piercing damage at range is exactly the sort of thing which can really tip the scales in the Goblin's favour in the late game, as we saw partially in the last battle replay as well, although in that case it was more just their general numbers, which ultimately overwhelmed the Arnorians. Will they be able to do the same to the Dwarves? The White Eric Fearmongers would definitely be an important part of that. Their armour piercing, their phalanx, very, very useful indeed. If they are used at the right time, the Dwarves will not enjoy fighting them from the front, but the Dwarves of course have got plenty of tools at their disposal also to counteract such a unit. We shall see. Heavy Goblin Halberds, one of the heroes of the last battle for the Misty Mountains that we saw. Again, not as good as the White Eric Fearmongers as you would expect, but numerous, and they can have a similar sort of impact if they are left untouched until the late game. Another unit of Heavy Goblin Crossbows there, and we also have a unit of Goblin King's Bodyguard, which is of course where the General is. They won't hold a candle to the higher tier of Dwarven Infantry in melee, but at the very least they are a very notable step up from most of the units that are in front of them and they do help keep things together. We saw the importance of the Misty Mountains General in the last battle as well. A couple of units of Cave Trolls, which will be very useful for pushing through blocks of Dwarven Infantry, should the need arise. They shouldn't be doing that too early in the battle. Um, timing is everything with Trolls like this. And then here at the back we also have three units of Mountain Uruk Coast. Again, the Uruk units showing their superiority to the Goblin units. Much better armour, much better at using their weaponry as well. They're still not going to be as good as the equivalent Dwarven infantry units in melee, uh, but at the very least they are still very numerous and they have a better shelf life than the standard heavy goblins. Moving on to the second, Misty Mounds Army Cannon Folder living up to his name by playing as the Orcs of the Misty Mounds. They were meant to be together, truly. 
the Orc Manganel. I mean, to be fair, the Orc Manganel might be ideal for softening up the defensive position, but you never can tell. It's a very fickle beast, the Manganel. It could get some really nasty hits, but it could also go awry, potentially hit their own army and send goblins rousing, but more likely it will just straight up miss. It's not as effective as it is over in Silmarillion, the Manganel, certainly, but it still can be a tool of good destruction for the goblins. A few units of heavy goblin archers as well. Against the Dwarven armour and shields, they will struggle to have a great impact, but they're the sort of annoyance which can convince the Dwarves into making mistakes using their own projectiles on a unit so lowly. A couple of units of Heavy Goblin Halberds once again, a few more units of Heavy Goblin Spears as well as several more units of Heavy Goblin Infantry, so we're not short on Goblins in this battle to be sure. More Mountain at Coast as well to offer a little bit of genuine quality to the lines. And then over here, another unit of the Goblin King's Bodyguard. So a very similar army overall, although instead of the trolls, cannon fodder instead has a piece of artillery that he can utilise. And then the third, and I believe final, Goblin army that's on the field today is under the command of Mevin. He did very well with his goblins last time. Let's see if he has the same fortune this time. Heavy Goblin crossbows, once again, could be one of the most important units on the battlefield, to be honest, if they're used to their fullest potential. It's the sort of thing which can make life very, very difficult for the dwarves indeed. Some heavy goblin archers are here also. Once again, more of an annoyance than anything else, but a useful annoyance. Heavy goblin spears, infantry, and some white oak fear mongers. I believe it doesn't look like there's any standard halberds, which is quite interesting. Mountain Eric Coaster here. Goblin King's bodyguard are also here. So very similar armies all around. Some slight differences between the three of them, but for the most part, very much going to be up to the same sort of thing, trying to overwhelm the dwarves over a long period of time. And then I believe we have a couple of Mordor armies, the first being under the command of Froggy, he's got some around on infantry. They are superior individually, certainly, to the Heavy Goblin infantry, there are fewer of them. Um, but the step up in terms of quality is going to be quite useful, especially against the Dwarves. They still won't be as good as the Dwarves, obviously, but you can't rely on numbers alone to break down a Dwarven defence like this. You will need to have something slightly better, and Mordor do offer a slightly higher average quality to their units, such as that. Minas Morgul chosen, very heavily armoured, again not up to the same standard as the Dwarven Crafts they're going to be facing off against, but even so, Minas Morgul Chosen are still very heavily armoured spears that will take a good beating before they fall. This is the kind of unit that will certainly really help the attackers keep their attack going for a little bit longer. Ran on Halberds, again, basically a superior variant of the Heavy Goblin Halberds they're going to be fighting alongside today. Orc Maulers with an armour upgrade. Armour piercing is going to be useful, but even with the armour upgrade they are quite a fragile unit, a large part, due in large part, to the fact that they have a very low melee defense, the fact they're unshielded, even with the armor upgrade, fragile to projectiles. If they can get into melee, though, they could be one of those units which is surprisingly efficient against the entry level Kazadum units. Olakaya here, again, trolls like this, they are up to much more in melee than the cave trolls are, but even so, timing is still going to be everything. If the Olakaya committed into a situation that doesn't suit them, especially against really high quality dwarven infantry, they will fall remarkably quickly, so you do need to be careful. Some more Minas Morgul chosen here. Another artillery piece in the shape of a Mordor Ballista, which could be really useful for shooting down the lanes of that Dwarven settlement. The Dwarves will have to be on the lookout for the uh, Orcs of Mordor using this effectively. Moran on guard are the spear variant of the infantry in front of them. Not armour piercing unlike the Heavy Goblin Spears, so this is actually a situation where I'd say the Goblins have got the advantage in this class of unit. Orc Javelins, bit of armour piercing though here for Mordor. Very cheap. Very efficient. Again, a problem potentially for the Dwarves as the battle wears on. And then we have Uruk Captains, Blackguard of Barad-dur, Sauron's Will, and Temple Executioners all in a big blob back here. Great Shield Infantry, Upper Tier Axemen, and of course a Bodyguard Tier Swordsman with the armour upgrade. Very, very deadly. Something that the Dwarves actually don't really have. Their uh, higher tier, highest tier infantry is uh, has a different focus. And then finally, for the attackers, we have D.F. Morris, who has got some around on guard on the front line, as we've seen previously and some Minas Morgul Chosen, so Spears leading the way, going to be backed up by a combination of their standard infantry and halberds. Also got some around on archers here, once again basic archers, but the attackers have got plenty of basic archers in this situation, so it'll be interesting to see how the dwarves deal with that, because it can be a really awkward thing to deal with as the defenders if the attackers really insist on using these units to their fullest capability. Blackguard of barad when will they choose to commit themselves? The dwarves have higher mass than most, and can hold the line very, very nicely, but the Blackguard of barad can really test those capabilities to their limits. Uruk Captains, Olag High and Temple Executions once again, a triumvirate of really powerful units. Bodyguard Swordsmen, Heavy Trolls, 
and armor-piercing bodyguard infantry, and some Sauron's will. So, now we shall move on to the defenders, into the settlement itself, which I think I'm going to dub this Kirik Gathol, because we haven't actually had a reforged variant of that particular settlement, and uh, this is a very impressive one as well. It is worth saying as well, before we continue, this is only a first draft of this settlement. More work could very well be done on it in the future, uh, but it definitely looks the part already, I would suggest. Mr. Sneakman is one of the Khazadum armies, he's got some Dwarven Miners. Yes, they're armor-piercing, but they're still a lower-tier unit of infantry, and if they stay, stay out in front like this, um, they're going to get run over by the Orcs. They are going to be backed up by some slightly more impressive units, the Warriors of Khazadum. Basic though they may be by Dwarven standards, by everyone else's standards, this is a really strong unit of infantry. Sentries of Khazadum, pikes are also something that neither Mordor nor the Misty Mountains actually traffic in at all, and Khazadum have got two very impressive examples of pikes, this being the more basic one, that you can litter your army with a little bit more readily. I'm sure we'll see the higher tier version as well, which will be useful. A couple of units of Orc Hunters as well. Yes, the Orc Hunters are a superior archer to the most of the archers that we're going to be seeing from the enemy, most of the skirmishes, I should say, that we're going to be seeing from the attackers. But the Orc Hunters still lack a little bit of armor compared to their Dwarven brethren. And do they have enough of them to really counteract the sheer number of skirmishes that the attackers have at their disposal? We shall have to wait and see. Sons of the Fallen are here, very heavy spears, of course, fantastic at holding the line. They're not multiple HP, but they're one of those units which is just short of being a bodyguard tier unit, really. First Legion Pikes, this is a very impressive unit. Arguably, I would say in my opinion, the best unit of Pikes in the game with the armor piercings. It makes such a difference. It pushes them above and beyond something like the Karas Galavon's Guardians, in my opinion, because they can just do damage to everything a little bit more quickly. And that is one of the things which Pikes can suffer from a little bit. They can do their damage rather slowly. Not a complaint you could level at the First Legion Pikes at all. Sons of the Fallen are back here, we're getting into some more higher tier units back here. Mithril Guard with their three hit points, nothing in Mordor's roster can boast that. Second Legion Axe Guard with the armor upgrade, plenty of AP which is going to be useful against all of the attackers today. More First Legion, more Dwarven Miners actually, this is from Eclipse as we start to get into his army as well. Warriors of Khazadum in the middle, Fourth Legion Shield Guard without the armor upgrade interestingly enough, but still going to be very good at holding the line. Hammers of Gundabad with their locked morale and of course those large armor piercing warhammers. Dwarven miners, some again more basic 4th legion shield guard up here on these little walkways which is a bit of a staple of some of the newer dwarven settlements as we've seen the game develop. These little walkways that you can utilize and the orc hunters are already in position. Some more 4th legion shield guard albeit these do have the armor upgrade. This is Viper Actions army, the, the final player in the battle today. Dwarven Miners, guarding the front entrance, we have some Warriors of Khazadum and some Orc Hunters of Khazadum, all arrayed, more Warriors of Khazadum there as well. I would assume Viper Action's army is going to be over here. Indeed, we have Orc Hunters, we have Hammers of Gundabad. I was wondering when we run into a unit of these, Khazadum Reclaimers with their throwing axes, exactly the sort of thing which the likes of the Sauron's Will and the White Eric Fearmongers will really want to avoid because the damage they can do to unshielded units is incredibly significant. Iron Watch of Miramir, the showstopper unit for the Dwarves of Khazadum. It's on the same sort of lines as the Blackrock Engineers and the Witchers for how much it can affect a game. This singular unit, we shall see if the Mortars can do their thing this time. Fourth Legion Shield Guard, more sentries and warriors of Khazadum. Over this little gorge we have some more Orc Hunters, more First Legion Pikes. I mean, there's plenty of attackers, but the quality of the defenders here is going to be up to the task for giving them at least a fight. We shall see if the three defenders can beat the five attackers this time with all this quality at their disposal. Sentries of Khazadum, Orc Hunters, more Reclaimers, more Sons of the Fallen and Third Legion Infantry. And then we will be making our way up to the pinnacle of the settlements over here where we will find a Dwarven Catapult, some Legion Bodyguard, some Guards of Khazadum as well as some more Sons of the Fallen. All the final stand over here. So there's a large amount of settlement to cover. Third Legion Infantry once again. Uh, but as I was saying, there's a large amount of settlement for the Dwarves to cover, but there's also a lot of defensive positions for the attackers to have to push their way through. So it is going to be a bit of a challenge for them, but we shall see what wins out here. The Dwarven resilience on the defence, or the unrelenting nature of Mordor and the Misty Mountains on the attack. But yeah, without further ado, let's begin. So perhaps, as could be expected, the Orcs are going to open up with sending their basic skirmishers forward first to try and pester the Dwarves into making some poor decisions. And rather unsurprisingly as well, they are going to be going after some of the more likely armoured troops. Now the Miners are of course the lowliest of combatants that Khazadun can field, 
but they are also the most vulnerable to archers like this, so the Moranon archers will be able to fill their boots in terms of kills, and allowing the orcish archers to get some decent kills under their belt, even if they're not of the highest quality, is not necessarily the best idea here. And, more worryingly for Khazad-dum, the sentries of khazad are also in full view of these archers. You can see there as well that the artillery has started to open up as well. The catapult starting to try and hit some important targets, perhaps here a little further back. Sauron's will taking a bit of a grazing hit there, but nothing too punishing. There are some orc hunters up there on the hill, um, but they have not yet started opening fire, which is a little bit surprising, because you would have thought with that sort of vantage point, they will have plenty of good targets to go after. First and foremost on the list of my priorities would actually be the Moranon Halberds with the Orc Hunters, because you would be able to kill them off very, very nicely. They are unshielded as well, unlike the majority of the other infantry, and as you can see, especially the ones pushing forward here initially. The Minas Morgul Chosen moving in. Standard shot from the Catapult, that's a little bit interesting. Moranon Archers now, for the time being though, just holding fire once again as the Catapult continues to bombard, maybe conserving a bit of ammunition here in his Moran on Archers, that would be interesting, seeing that this is perhaps too low a priority, already a bit of damage has been done, the Dwarven Miners now getting into a denser formation, and also pulling back to the assistance of those Warriors of Custom, but not quickly enough again. And again, Mr. Sneakman a little bit slow on the draw there, and the Moran on Infantry will be able to catch them out, and while the Armour Piercing will help against these Uruks, uh, the Moran on infantry will ultimately... Actually, I don't know if they are orcs, they're basic infantry, so I guess they would just be armoured orcs. Yeah, those Dwarven Miners are not going to enjoy being in melee with all of this, especially not against the Minas Morgul Chosen. This is a completely different class of unit that they're going to have to try and deal with here. You can see some fire arrows being spewed forth from the Orc Hunters, but that's not really going to be enough to route all of these units. The Minas Morgul Chosen are made of sterner stuff than that. Fiery projectiles coming in from all angles. Now, up here... To be fair, it is a nice vantage point, but as you can see there, just from that one volley, so many of those arrows are being buried into the terrain right in front. Again, not a great bit of observation, though. Pretty poor. The Orc Hunters, however, continuing to fire. Crossfire happening now. Yeah, this Dwarven front line, you can see that immediately the Black Guard of Baradur coming forward, so Mordor being very, very aggressive. And it is to their credit, I think. Because, like I said in the composition phase, this outer defence didn't look all that sturdy. It didn't look to have enough support behind it, and yes, there's a lot of arrows coming forth, and this is really the only way in which Khazadum can now make this work, I think, is to use their ranged firepower. Now, the catapult will greatly assist with that, as the Orc Hunts of Khazadum continue to pour their arrows into that position. But the Black Guard of barad taking damage, and they are shaken as a result of the fire arrows, but remember, this is great shield infantry so they will be quite resilient to arrow fire, more so than most. And you can see that this Dwarven front line has broken, at least large parts of it have, as a result of this push. And also, they're going to be getting friendly fire here, the Dwarves, rather unavoidably. So, those fire arrows will also be having a detrimental impact on them. Black Guard of Barad are shaken, but they have managed to push their way towards the archers. And yeah, I was going to say, there's really no point in sending the Sons of the Fallen forward. It's far too little too late. And Mordor crashing through that defence without too much problem at all. So a bad start for the Dwarves. They're going to need to do far better and make far better choices going forward. Otherwise, we will be seeing an Orcish and Goblin victory. They'll be paying him moving some heavy Goblin infantry into place. There you can see the Manganel firing away. None of those fiery chunks managing to connect there with the Warriors of Khazadum. That one did, but it was a direct hit. The Manganel is one of those artillery pieces, well, is the artillery piece where you need to shoot above the unit, really, and have the fiery death rain down upon them, because a direct hit makes it effectively just a less effective version of the catapult. And that's not what you need to see. Meanwhile, arrows also being utilised from the low ground, this time from Heavy Goblin Archers as they get into position, and they're going to be trying the same sort of thing again. Warriors of Khazadum from Viper Action holding the line as the Heavy Goblin Infantry make their way up the stairs of Gabilgathol. Yes, this is, the, this is the sort of fight that the Dwarves will be quite comfortable in. The Heavy Goblin Infantry is really going to be no match at all for good quality Dwarven Infantry. Arrows being shot back and forth, but you have to say this is the sort of thing that uh, the Goblins will really not mind at all. Some of these arrows being used even on basic Goblin Infantry, so they can be shielded as well. A real luxury for these Goblins and the Heavy Goblin Archers continuing to do their thing. WK hugging the cliffside. 
just look at all of this. This is an intimidating sight. Large armies as they begin their march on the fortress. Um, up here, goblin infantry, standard goblin infantry, so even worse than the heavy goblins moving up the stairs as well. And they're without support, so Eclipse is going to move forward with his own unit of warriors of Kazadum. The armor upgrade is certainly not going to be enough for these goblin infantry to do anything of too much note. Meanwhile, it is in the Mordor part of the map where we've seen the attackers gain the most ground very, very quickly. Orkans of Kazadum, again, the problem with this sort of defensive position is that archers can have a tendency to shoot into the terrain directly in front of them. Catapult is there. And you can see now this is a much more scary looking defense with Kazadum reclaimers ready to rain hell down upon this Mordor push. The Blackguard of Barada are still alive, but they're far depleted at this point, so they can't really push through with the same effectiveness as they once did. The Olag Kai as well getting involved, but with First Legion Pikes, Sons of the Fallen, and plenty of Dwarven Axemen also moving in, uh, this is a defensive position which is far more solid, and Mordor's progress will likely be slowed significantly after their initial gains. And if you're Mordor in this situation, you kind of need to see that this is going to be the case. You need to ease off the gas a little bit and start to take a slower approach, because this is not the sort of thing you can batter through quickly. The Dwarves are well entrenched now and you need to try and start playing the long game. And focus will shift over to your Misty Mountains allies and other parts of the map to try and get things done. Meanwhile, Goblin Infantry pushing up the stairs. And actually, these Warriors of Custom are a little bit out of position now, so the Goblin Infantry did choose the right time to advance, although they will need some substantial help. Otherwise, these Warriors of Custom will carve their way through them, but there are some Mountain Orc Berserkers on the way forward. That armor piercing will be useful. Goblin King's bodyguard getting into a position close to the stairs here, presumably so the general is nearby, so they're less likely to rout all of these goblins. You can see there's some dwarven miners taking some hits from the archers on the low ground. Just look at all of the goblins crowding up the stairs to try and push through, but not an easy task to push uphill like this, and the dwarven infantry is well positioned to stop them there. And then over here, the dwarves did pull back a little bit from the more exposed bits of the terrain. WK is sending forward some mountain or a coast immediately with his heavy goblins, just to show that if the need arises, he can send some quality to the front line as well, albeit with hammers of Gundabad in close proximity. Mountain or a coast will really not enjoy going up against the warhammers of the hammers of Gundabad. Snaga skirmish is moving forward, going to try and get some javelin action on the go. Soften up this dwarven front line a little bit. Might be worth going after the hammers actually, but this is the sort of thing, yes, indeed. The archers are going to open up, and this is actually a good thing because the Snaga skirmishers are the true target. But even if you miss them, you're going to hit something. And while you don't really want to be shooting into the front of shielded line infantry, such as this, if you're doing damage, that's good enough. And the dwarves kind of need to, because if they push, they could push forward, I suppose, but that would just leave them a little bit further away from their own nice skirmish positions. So you've got to take what you can get. Warriors of Kazadum will move forward, and WK will pull those Snaga skirmishes back. Will the Warriors follow through? They will. So they are going to get into melee. The first ranks are Heavy Goblin Infantry, but just in behind them are the Mountain Eric Coast, and they will join in the Mountain Eric Coast, a far better match for Warriors of Kazadum than the Goblins are. Meanwhile, back here in the centre, there, there is a road that connects these positions as well. Unlike on the other side, where it is just a sheer cliff, so there, it's not just a symmetrical settlement, this. You do have to take note of the differences. More heavy goblins pushing up this side now. Continuing to put real pressure on the front entrances as well. You have plenty of disposable goblins if you're the Misty Mountains in this situation. There's out of ammunition archers in there. There's also heavy goblin spears, which are better at pushing through and better at dealing damage to this dwarven infantry. What do the dwarves do here? I'm. I'm there's a little bit of indecision, I think, here from the Dwarves just generally. Do they want to really commit to this frontal defence, or do they want to pull back? Looking like they're going to pull back here, so that one unit of Warriors of Kazadum is going to be completely overwhelmed again. Their defensive position split in two. A smaller scale version of what happened with the Mordor push earlier on, as the Heavy Goblin Spears start to flood forward. And the first part of the settlement here exposed. But they do have plenty of good positions for their archers here. Do the dwarves. They will need to make good use of them. Meanwhile, plenty of arrows streaming down into this position over here. Moran on guard moving forward. Moran on archers. Minas Morgul chosen. To be fair, this is still mostly fairly resilient units that Mordor is sending forward. As I say that, there's Temple Executioners over here. Early committal from them. Kazadum Reclaimers. If they see them, 
And I think they probably will, because they're very well aware of their presence. Yeah, throwing axes are coming in, arrows are coming in. Those temple executions are taking a lot of damage. Early commitment from them. Moran on archers doing their best to do some damage to the Khazadun Reclaimers from the low ground, but they're well armoured, and the terrain means they're not taking tons of hits here. And this is too good of a position for the Khazadun Reclaimers to give up, so they're going to hold their ground and continue to use their projectiles and do a lot of damage to the Mordor Assault. Another unit of Moran on infantry moving forward, but already very, very depleted. They may very well have routed and come back, actually, with that level of damage done to them. Temple Exodus is already almost split in half. Another full-blooded volley there from the Khazadun Reclaimers. Once again, the Moran on infantry routing. Yeah, that dwarven front line. Risking it a little bit, getting this close to battles that are so intense. But yeah, second Legion Axe Guard. There's all sorts of AP. There's Mithril Guard on the front line. Mr. Sneakman making up for the earlier losses he suffered in a big way there doing plenty of damage to Mordor. This is a wide position for Khazadun to have to try and defend, but they're going to try it. Goblin Infantry getting into melee with the Dwarven Miners. The Dwarven Miners will win that fight, of course. The Goblin Infantry are really trash, even with that armour upgrade. They're not up to much. Heavy Goblin Archers getting into position, hoping to get some good shots onto some of the Dwarven Infantry units. Heavy Goblin Archers that are out of melee, out of, melee, out of ammunition are now in melee. And their reward for shooting all of their payload off is they get to go into melee with some 4th Legion. Which is going to go about as well as you would expect, and they rout almost immediately. More heavy goblin archers are there, so the Misty Mountains in no rush here. Sending forward some trash. They do need to be a little bit careful though, because even though 65 heavy goblin archers is not a huge loss for them, they can't afford to just send units to their doom in that manner too often. Meanwhile, once again, you can see that the Misty Mountains have employed that pushing potential of theirs with all of their numbers. There's a few dead hammers. Are the hammers of Grindabad fully committed? No, surely not. Either way, this one unit of Warriors of Khazadum has been, again, pushed past and surrounded. Having said that, they've made the Misty Mountains pay for this. There's really not many of the goblins left, and even the Uruks are significantly more depleted than they were. Black Uruks of the Mountains taking a few hits from the Orc Hunters. They've got a lot of skirmishes here, the Dwarves. Lots of these archers, which so far have been the bedrock of their defence, to be honest, because they've done all across the battlefield. We've been seeing those Dwarven arrows fly. May not be what you associate with the Dwarves, but time on expedition in the mountains has taught them that skill. Dwarven Miners moving forward, hoping to get a rear charge here, potentially, into the Heavy Goblin Infantry. And that could be enough to rout them, honestly. They're already shaken. Goblins not known for their stout-heartedness. A few arrows being used on the Dwarven Miners. Heavy Goblin Spears moving forward also. And the Dwarves actually pushing forward. Making the attempt to perhaps reclaim their old defensive positions, which is a potentially risky move. As the Warriors of Khazadum close up into melee with the Goblin Spears. That armor piercing will really help them, but quality-wise, especially if Khazadum are willing to commit numbers to this defense, that won't be enough alone to allow the Misty Mountains to win this fight. Fire arrows coming in, this will probably be enough, honestly, to cause all of these basic goblins and heavy goblins to start routing. A lot of them falling by the wayside here. Crispy goblins. More heavy goblin archers in the background, however, just doing a little bit of damage here and there to the dwarves. I often say, the beauty of playing the Misty Mountains is that sort of thing. You don't have to flinch at that kind of thing. Oof, Iron Watch of Miramir is now over here, so... Well and truly, Mordor have been thrown into the meat grinder here as the mortar sends orcs flying by the dozen. But you can also see there a nice position from Mordor's ballista, firing from on high, going after the Iron Watch. So the Iron Watch will have to pull back. The mortar's time on this front line is over, but they could still go after those Khazadun Reclaimers. That's a nice little bit of high ground that Mordor have noticed that they can take advantage of, but their infantry has really been put through the ringer here. And when you give the Dwarves a really nice defensive position, this is the sort of thing that can result from that. Reclaimers, Orc Hunters, and the Iron Watch doing a lot of damage to the Mordor infantry as I try to push forward, and the Dwarven frontline has been unmoving, really. They've taken... it's bowed a little bit, but with the First Legion Pikes, the Mithril Guard, Sons of the Fallen, it's pretty much the scariest frontline that Mr. Sneakman could build with his units anyway. And then the Second Legion Axe Guard also add that little bit of extra damage to the frontline that's 
is always nice. Meanwhile, Orc Javelin's on the low ground, killing a few Kazadun Reclaimers, but ultimately, once again, the fact they're up so high is mitigating this damage somewhat. Several of those Javelins sailing overhead, only a few of them actually connecting. Some Dwarven Miners moving forward, just to add a bit of numbers to the front line. The House of Ammunition Reclaimers, I believe those are as well. Yes, indeed, another two-handed action on the front line. Mordor continue to push, continue to try and put pressure on, but it has been a bloody engagement there. Still those archers up there on those walkways just in behind. Not many goblins left fighting for further entry into the settlement now, and indeed they continue to rout. In come the Olag High. They're already bloodied up as a result of their engagement through the narrow gap on the eastern side of the fort. Yeah, Olag High on their own. A few throwing axes coming in, but they're already damaged. So I don't know how much longer they'll last in melee with any sort of Dwarven infantry. Although if they were going to be committed, I suppose this would be the ones you would want to send them against. As the Warriors of Custom actually continue to try and push past the Mordor Trolls and get at the exposed Goblin Archers. Moving over here now, getting after some more Dwarven infantry, the upgraded 4th Legion. They are spearmen, so that malice means that the trolls won't take quite as much damage at the hands of them, but they're going to continue to take losses there as more trolls fall. I'm actually surprised they're alive at all, given the fact that you know they were really in the thick of it when Mordor were taking that punishment. I mean, the Dwarven line is holding, but it's a lot of goblins they're having to face off against here. And it's a little bit wider of a defensive position, this, so... Is this really going to work out in the long run for the Dwarves, even if it says victory seems certain for now? WK not moving forward over here just yet. He is forced, essentially, to go through this little uh, bit of raised terrain over here because there is a little bit of a gap. So, again, another difference with the other side of the map. You can't go directly this way. It's going to have to go through the middle as well. Perhaps he's waiting for a little bit more progress to be made over here, and then they can try and cut all of these units off and surround them. And that's a large amount of Dwarven strength. They could potentially catch between their armies here, but that does rely on the fact that the Misty Mountains eventually need to try and push through this defence. And the Dwarves have managed to push them back to the stairs. Javelins raining down from on high. Olag High are there. Yeah, the fourth one. One Olag High is there. Mountain are at coast, moved forward by Mevan now, perhaps sensing the fact that a bit of quality, or a bit more quality anyway, is needed on the front line to try and get through this defence. I think in general, now that there is a bit of a gap, they need to send forward something substantial here. Try and wash over this high ground. And now you can see once again those dwarves up on those walkways, using those fire arrows. Any depleted units that are wavering, that's the sort of thing which could tip them over the edge. Mountain at Coast getting into position. Again, all of these dwarven arrows really doing the business now. Fourth Legion Shield Guard are routing though, so the fire arrow is not actually helping them in that situation. Their position was compromised by the Mountain at Coast. The Berserkers were also on their way forward, and they are depleted, so maybe not paying attention too much to them, but is that the end of the world for the Dwarves? Possibly not. Oof. Orc Javelins are over here. There's no range support really anymore over here for Mr. Sneakmount, so he's going to have to try and get by on strength to arms alone. But they should be able to manage that, honestly, because this is a rather token effort from Mordor at this point to try and keep the assault going. And the Dwarves still have plenty of quality over here, so... Despite the earlier defence being dealt with really very, very quickly, Mordor have been sufficiently bloodied at this point for the Dwarves, I think, to have a bit of an advantage over there. Meanwhile, the other unit of Olaikai, the healthy unit of Olaikai, now moving forward with some Uruk captains. The surround from... The Misty Mountains as well is complete, so this Dwarven front line is now going to start falling apart. The longer they linger here, though, the attackers are going to be subject to more and more of those fire arrows. Which, given the opponent, fire arrows under most situations are not going to be worthwhile, but given that it's the Misty Mountains and even Mordor, and given the amount of pressure they're under, it is potentially the difference between them routing and not routing, so I can definitely understand why the Dwarves are doing that now. They're going to try and pull back here. Uruk Captain's moving forward. Morris seemingly having a different idea to the rest of his allies. And that, I think, ultimately, may very well end up costing him the like of his Uruk Captains. Not the sort of unit you can afford to lose unthinkingly. As the Dwarves are now getting into a defensive shape a little bit deeper into the settlement. And there you can see the Khazadum Axe Throwers seeing an opportunity there to kill off a few of the Uruk Captains as they turn their backs on them. 
over here meanwhile. Uh, that there was the manganel. Is it over there? Where is the manganel? There's some crispy units there. Meanwhile, cave trolls are moving in. But a fairly thick dwarven front line, and you can see that as a result, cave trolls do die before they make it all the way through the dwarven lines. And the dwarves have also got some orc hunters in a really good position there. WK realises that though, and he's trying to block the way with this unit of heavy goblin infantry with their shields pointing in the right direction. Yes, they're going to take lots of losses still, but better than the side of his line being compromised. Orc hunters that are out of ammunition joining the front line just to add more numbers to this defensive position. WK is attacking over here now, so they probably should be attacking through the middle as well, the attackers, just to put as much pressure on the dwarves as possible. And they are preparing to do so by the looks of things. I wonder how much ammunition the dwarves have left in reserve. That is an important question, because they have seemingly loosed a lot of arrows already in this fight. Heavy Goblin Archers starting to do their thing. The Europe captains are moving in, but they're moving in on their own. They're going to need assistance. And uh, fortunately, Mevin sees that. Mountain Uruk Coast is going to move forward. The Uruk captains are, of course, armor piercing. But that isn't going to matter too much if those Khazadam axe throwers continue to do damage on that level to them. Mordor once again being bullied from the high ground. And perhaps, I mean, is there a way that you could push through? Perhaps. I think the attackers need to steal themselves a little bit here. They've become a little bit standoffish. Perhaps as a result of Mordor's, the mauling that Mordor has received on the eastern side of the fort. They've become a little bit more cautious, and overly so in certain areas, I think. Loads of trolls over here, though, and against basic Khazadum units, this actually is what you need. There are a few throwing axes coming in, but WK has got the right of it, I think. This defensive position is a little bit less scary, and you have the opportunity to try and force the issue here as the trolls continue to do their thing. Not a great deal of damage dealers over here either, but the catapult, I mean, that was a nice hit, but it wasn't absolutely devastating, but the longer that the goblins stay here, that was a nice hit. The more devastating this is likely to get. So WK is on the clock now. He needs to try and get through this defensive position as quickly as he possibly can. This will hasten the goblins trying to push through the lines. The more you can bunch up into the dwarven area as well, the more likely friendly fire at the hands of that artillery is going to happen. Are they going to continue to fire? They are. And they were targeting that unit of spears, so that has made that catapult shoot wide now. So they did well there. Yeah, this Dwarven defense is about to fall apart. A lot of them are routing. Cave Trolls and Olaikai at its center. More Orcs and Goblins pouring up onto this position. A little bit more like it now. There's a few Uruk captains remaining, but not many. A Mordor general is in the fight here. Mountain Uruk coast. Defeat seems certain, which is surprising. They should be able to defeat the depleted forces that are up against them. I mean, this unit of Khazadun reclaimers is going to... Is it going to end up cut off? Yes, it is. There is no way through back here. So a decision is going to have to be made on what to do with them. Meanwhile a complete failure on this attack from Mordor and they are now effectively waiting their time when these dwarves have to retreat because of events in other parts of the battlefield and then what remains of Mordor's infantry can also push forward. Um, but that is the right call. Mordor still have units. There goes the Mordor general at the hands of the miners. Even the lowliest unit can be useful. Yeah, look at this now. And you can see that the they found a little gap here. Have the mountain at coast, they're going to pour through. And this Dwarven defensive position is now a little bit compromised. They've made some good gains in terms of their kills up to this point, the Dwarves, but they're in danger here of losing a few more units inefficiently. And that's never a good sign if you're the defenders. In come the Hammers of Gundabad, adding themselves to the good solid defensive nature of the 4th Legion. And they're very close to the high ground over here as well, positionally. This is pretty questionable, and the attackers are going to take full advantage of that. And yeah, the dwarves realise immediately the longer they stay here, the more damage these Snarga skirmishes are going to do to them. So they're going to have to pull back behind these bridges. Narrower choke points to take advantage of. And there's plenty of dwarves in behind here already. You can see that the First Legion pikes are in place. A few goblin arrows coming through the gaps. The First Legion are pretty resilient to basic arrow fire at the very least. Crossbow bolts are a different matter entirely. Meanwhile... 
Uh, Kazadun Reclaimers have pulled back. They are up here on the high ground. Going axe to axe now with some Mountain Orc Berserkers. The problem is they're just completely cut off, so eventually this one unit is going to end up overwhelmed by the forces of evil. When they get up onto this high ground as well, they will be able to bombard the dwarves if they have much in the way of ammunition left. I'm sure they do. We haven't seen the heavy goblin crossbows get used yet. There weren't any temple guard, if I remember correctly, from the uh, from the composition phase. Norris still has his temple executioners. Froggy, not so fortunate. The trolls looping back around. Arrows still being used. This position now completely in the hands of the attackers, but they're going to be made to pay for even that as the orc hunters begin to shoot. And that is the crossbow. So yeah, they're doing the right thing by going after the crossbows, definitely. If the crossbows get into position... They're capable of doing a lot of damage to the dwarves. One of the things that I would be most worried about if I were the defenders. You can see back over there, there's archers firing in. I mean, that is, this, def this position is really nice for the archers to shoot at, but it's also quite exposed. So these orc hunters are open to attack as well. Meanwhile, some mountain are at coast pushing their way through these gaps right now, but First Legion and Warriors of Khazadum setting up yet another front line that the attackers are going to have to try and batter their way through. Um, they're going to need to be a little bit more committed than sending forward or filtering in Mountain or a Coast in this manner. They're certainly up to more than the Heavy Goblin units we've seen, but First Legion. You know the doors mean business when their defence is made up of that. They're still just reorganising themselves a little bit. And, yeah, I mean... Kazadun Reclaimers fighting well. I mean, I probably wouldn't send the Oleg High against the Kazadun Reclaimers, to be honest, because in melee with them, those two-handed axes are going to be really good against the trolls, especially as wounded as they already are, but he's put his Kazadun Reclaimers into what is effectively a corner here, and a narrow one at that, so they will be able to defeat these Mountain Orc Berserkers. Very shrewd indeed. More units are now starting to push through. Orc Hunters are there. Whatever happened to the crossbows? Did they pull back? You can see here the Snaga skirmishers are firing at something. They are actually going after the archers up here. I don't think the dwarves will mind that too much, as long as the lives of their higher team, it's like their pikes are preserved. And these orc hunters have already done a good amount of damage in this fight. Anything extra from this point on is a bonus. Yeah, this is nice for the dwarves, because they're splitting up the attack. They're making it a little bit harder for the attackers to have a unified front against this sort of thing. 4th Legion Shield Guard, Hammers of Gundabad, 1st Legion Pikes and Warriors of Khazadum all together fighting a rather broken assault from these mountain or coasts. And this can only be a good thing for the Dwarves. And they have plenty of reinforcements as well, so the attackers are going to have to get serious about this. They're not going to be able to send forward token forces like this going after the Orc Manganel with yet more fire arrows. We've seen more fire arrows by far than we would see in an average battle. It's not quite Silmarillion where fire arrows like this can actually demolish artillery very, very quickly. But it is still a valid... You can still set fire to artillery artillery pieces like that. Have you got the archers are shooting point blank now? Which could be a worry for the dwarves. But the first legion pikes are being largely helped by a meat shield in front of them in the Dwarven Miners. They are unshielded, so it is very much a meat shield light -like situation, but this is a nice little victory for the attackers. The more damage they can do like this, the better it will be for them as the battle goes on, and they will ultimately do damage as well to the First Legion over time. Don't know if the Dwarves have noticed that that's what's going on so far. What's happening over here? Ah, Mordor pushing forward yet again. Temple Executioners being sent in, but again, Morris... He probably needs to let his allies know a little bit more often that he's sending forward a unit like this because we saw it happen with the Uruk captains earlier where he sent them in and he basically left it up to his allies to realise what he was doing and by the time they did, his elite unit of infantry had already been ta had already taken damage because it was vastly outmatched on the front line. I'm not even sure Froggy wants to move into this position because I, I think he realises they don't have enough to actually push through here yet. He's sending forward something to at least try and help the Orc Javelins and the Orc Maulers, but it's not going to be enough, and Mr. Sneakman 
I think, can smell blood now. He's going to just move forward to try and destroy those temple executions. So, yeah, I'm not, not sure what Morris is doing. That's the second time he's made that mistake in this battle. Um, and it's not the right thing to do. If you're going to do that, maybe in the message box say, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Help me. Rather than just sending them in and then expecting your allies to notice when there's so much going on in the other parts of the battlefield as well. As the dwarves starting to force the attackers back. What have we got over here? Heavy Goblin Halberd starting to make an appearance on the front line. So starting to see some attacking phalanx units. They'll do quite nicely against the warriors of Khazad-dum. But the sniper skirmishes in the background. I mean, they will do really poorly against the First Legion pikes, of course. The superior range of pikes, and it's not even as if armor piercing can be their their thing. Heavy goblin crossbows now in a good position, and this ultimately will force Mr. Sneakman to move backwards. He did more. He got a little bit of extra damage done before he did have to pull back. But when the crossbows get into a position like that, you do need to you do need to pull back and get into a new defensive shape. The thing is, though, as they move around here, the positions they've taken underneath the, those bridges over there may very well end up being compromised unless they set up a new defense. And Eclipse is going to do that, potentially. Or Hunter of Kazadun moving across to assist the depleted forces that Mr. Sneakman has. Mountain are at coast now in melee after the initial bits of damage that the Heavy Goblin Archers have been doing, but again, the Mountain are at coast not making too many inroads in melee just yet. Seeing a dwarf getting killed off there, but the true threat is the pikes, and the pikes are still pretty exposed now, and exactly the sort of thing Mevin would have been hoping for. The pikes are a little bit further back now as well. Uh, what have we here? And once again, Snaga skirmishes, so we're seeing more and more the attackers getting good shots underneath the bridges here. Kazadum really need to try and prevent this as best as they're able, even if they're sending forward a token unit to try and push those Snaga skirmishes back temporarily. That is what I think needs to happen. Warven position there. So what are they going to do here? Hawk Javelins may be getting a bit too far ahead of themselves. And they're going to be introduced to the business end of these axes from the Kazadum Reclaimers. A little bit further back, Temple Execution is moving forward. Less depleted than I thought they would be, actually. So Morris getting away with it a bit there. Ooh. That looked like a good hit. Yeah, right into the middle there of the Orc Maulers and the Black Guard of Baradun. Nice hit. So much damage done over there already. But yeah, these Orc Javelins are not going to do much. Being in melee, certainly not their forte. As efficient as a unit as they can be, this is not what they're all about at all. Temple Executions once again moving forward without support. I mean, on this occasion, is it a little bit more understandable? Perhaps, because it's only Orc Council of Custom that are over here, but it's still risky to send your unit in against this many combatants. And they will take losses here, the dwarves far more so, but mm, sending forward elites without support is, is questionable. They're really starting to amp up the pressure a bit more on these front lines now as well. Some heavy goblin infantry testing the front line as well. Hearing yet more artillery hits somewhere. Not seeing the uh, smouldering corpses that signifies a devastating blow though. What is this? Rotting meat? Far more likely to have a negative impact on the attackers here. Kazadum's morale among the very best. And that rotting meat is certainly not going to help matters for lower tier units. Snaga skirmishes desperately being thrown in. The trolls, under normal circumstances, the trolls would be ideal against pikes, I would say. But not here. That armor piercing really does make a big difference, and it makes these pikes have much more venom to them. And the Olag High, we may be seeing the last of the attackers' trolls here. And maybe some other cave trolls milling around at back somewhere, but... From Mordor's perspective, their race is run. More javelins coming in, just trying to wear these dwarves down. Both sides, really. Fantastic at attrition warfare, but for very different reasons. The dwarves from quality. Mordor and the goblins from quantity, but this is a bad this is a bad thing for the dwarves. 
their front line has buckled as a result of the first legion being slowly worn down now they push forward with their spears first the mountain are at coast are pushing forward now is an opportunity for the attackers to really spill forwards but they need more infantry in order to be able to do that something like heavy goblin halberds would really help things but they're in danger actually of this attack falling apart because of routing and that's exactly what's happening unfortunately they weren't in a good enough position to send forward more units. The Orc Maulers once again assisting the Temple Executioners, but then they haven't done very well here at all. Already wounded, and those wounds making the difference. So the Orc Hunters fighting well, and the Mordor Assault over here once again stuttering a little bit, but there's plenty more Orcs moving forward. Heavy units as well in the background, as you can see. Blackguard of Baradur and Minas Morgul chosen. Another unit of Temple Executioners, actually. So there you go. More quality. The Black Numenorians. Uruk Captains. They've managed to surround this unit of Second Legion. Mr. Sneakman's going to have to set up another defensive position. I mean, they're very close, actually, to the summit of the hill, almost, Mordor. If you think about it. Will they assist their allies in moving forward? Yeah, the Dwarves are going to have to pull back. This defensive position now is fully compromised. And the longer they stay here, the more losses they're going to take. They could leave the Hammers of Gundabad behind as a rear guard because of their locked morale. I mean, it's not as if the attackers have been able to get through here without any losses, but I do think the attackers will be quite pleased with how they've managed to deal with this defence. And they're still taking pot shots at the dwarves as they retreat. Every dwarf killed now is one that they won't have to deal with later on. I think we are going to see... The Dwarves have to set up two more defensive positions on the hills. Temple Executioners pouring forwards. There's a few stragglers that are being dealt with as Mordor sweep through with their heavily armoured units. And that is going to be that. I mean, just looking at the amount of numbers the attackers still have, they're still going to fancy their chances, surely. The Dwarves depleted at this stage, but they're going to have quality, and the defensive positions as we get back to the final reaches of the map are pretty severe. Why turret fearmongers are routing from something, which is surprising. I think they should still have their Iron Watch. I don't think they used up all their ammunition against Mordor earlier. Goblin infantry moving in. Trying to chase down more Dwarves, but they're not going to be able to catch any more. Sauron's will were there. Rose of Kazadum in position. Are they going to pull back all the way? No, they're going to defend two choke points, hoping to split the attackers up, and then the final one will be there. So, how will the attackers choose to approach this situation? I mean, is there anything still fighting over here? I don't think so. Oh no, yes indeed there is. My mistake, the Hammers of Gundabad were left behind as a rearguard action. The locked morale really helping them. I mean, they're going to destroy Heavy Goblin Archers in melee, but they will find the Blackbacks a much sterner test, and with Javelins being shot into their backs as well, this perhaps won't be the heroic performance that the Dwarves maybe hoped it would be. Goblin King's Bodyguard still in perfect health. They will be required later on, I'm sure. Just having a look over here, plenty of units still up and about. Heavy Goblin Spears in numbers. We still have a Ballista up here. Can they... Can they thread the needle? I mean, they may as well use it now, because the stairwell up to the final defensive position is not going to be conducive to using a Ballista. So Mordor probably need to find a way to try and use it effectively now if they are indeed going to be able to at all. Over here, meanwhile, heavy coffin archers and blackback berserkers, the two ends of the spectrum of Misty Mountain's units. A few orc maulers coming in here as well just to help finish things off. And there we have it. Just going to be over here, I think we're going to start to see some action. In fact, we're going to start to see some action immediately. Heavy Goblin Crossbow is into position. This is an interesting conundrum for the Dwarves. What do they do about that? Do they have anything that can respond to that effectively? 
like I said earlier on, if you dump, well, not in so many words, but if the dwarves don't have anything in terms of ranged power left, the attackers can use all that they have left at their leisure to soften the dwarves up and then try and overwhelm them with sheer numbers. It's a bit unfortunate perhaps for the dwarves that these towers, which we have seen in other settlements, are not active defensive positions. That would help them out a little bit. Mountain Eric host. Are they going to move forward? They're not going to be able to achieve all that much. Perhaps they're just moving in to prevent a counter-attack forwards into the crossbows. Those 4th Legion shield guard moving backwards. And look at all of these dwarves moving up to the top of the settlement. The dwarves have got quite a lot left actually, and considering this is one defensive position, the Iron Watcher here as well, this, this could be a winning strategy for the dwarves. This is how they like to do their business after all. I feel like this is going to be the sort of defence that we are going to be making fairly liberal use of times two speed on, however. But now we can go back to one speed. Warriors of Custom. Ah, I spoke too soon. He just dipped his toe in and then decided, actually, you know what, no. Nope, we're not getting into melee. Just getting nice and close. And there we go again. Just moving forward and javelins being utilised again. Unupgraded 3rd Legion infantry. Still, as far as line infantry goes, superior to anything the orcs and the goblins can throw at them. More javelins coming in though, that's the sort of thing which is going to worry the dwarves. Yeah, I would go with that. You just get the sense that it's, there's too many attackers still left, but it all comes down, I think, to whether or not the Iron Watch and all of this quality that's at the top of the hill can hold the final position to the extent where the attackers start to rout. They just don't have the quality to push through anymore. That's the sort of thing which could give the dwarves their victory here. Throwing axes being used as well. Our Mountain Eric Coast is questionable. They'll be a little bit more resilient to the high damage that the Kazadun Reclaimers can do. I don't know why I'm on times 6 speed 4, times 2 is what I was looking for. Thinking it was a little bit jaddery. There's still Goblin Infantry alive, which is kind of impressive. And then further back, Heavy Goblin Archers doing their thing still with a bit of ammunition from them. Heavy Goblin Crossbows also. Crossbows doing their thing. Firing into the hammers of Gundabad just in behind. And what have we here? Whiter at Fearmongers, Heavy Goblin Crossbows, Snaga Skirmishers, and the attackers really doing a good job with their skirmishers, you have to say. Doing their best to worry the dwarves, keep them stewing in their own juices. And this has to be a frustrating thing if you're the defender, if the attackers can continuously use their ammunition in this manner against you. It's this front line, there's Temple Executioners on this front line now as well, alongside Snaga, Mountain Eric Ho, Scotland so an eclectic mix of Orcs, Goblins and Black Numenorians. In come the Black Guard of Baradur, they're going to try and push through here. The time has come for the, for the Orcs to try and make their move, the Minas Morgul Chosen will also push through in behind them and there you can see another well executed push from Mordor which to be fair they've done a pretty good job at that in spite of the losses they took in that narrow path on the right hand side of the map from our perspective on the minimap anyway they've really they've really done a good job at committing when they needed to and there you can see that the catapult doing its best to shoot so we're down to times one speed for the moment Although I imagine when we get to the push up the stairs, we will be making more use of times two speed. Minus Morgul Chosen continuing to push. Is there enough quality over here now? One of the catapult crews has been exposed. There's Dwarven Miners. The Dwarves still relying on Miners to try and do the business. Only one general for either side has fallen as of yet. One of the Mordor ones, which is perhaps why we saw the routing of those Blackguard. Goblin Infantry. Still heavy goblin crossbows firing away though. Still units all the way back over there. 243 spears. Healthy heavy goblin spears. Ready to be committed later on. It's interesting actually that the dwarves are still committing stuff out here. Another catapult being utilised. 
point-blank range over here. Whiter at Fearmongers and plenty of Halberds as well, so the Goblins hoping to use a Phalanx to good effect. And to be fair, they probably will be able to because it's only really a hodgepodge group of sentries which is blocking their ascent to the peak of Gabilgathol. More throwing axes being utilised from on high. It's the sort of thing the dwarves need to happen at this point. They need to do damage quickly to the orcs. Convince more of them that it's in their best interest to start routing. Third Legion Infantry pushing in from the side, which should be enough to start routing Snaga and Goblin Infantry. It's a small victory, but it's the sort of thing that the dwarves need to start see happening. A bit of armour piercing moving forward as well. More mountain orc berserkers. Not a very resilient unit, but... The damage is what's important here for the goblins. Ballista bolts being used from Mordor, pushed over to this side of the battlefield, doing some damage to the dwarves, but also some damage to their own allies, and that is going to be enough to convince some of the lesser combatants to flee. So, not great there from Mordor's ballista. Not exactly what they would have been looking for. More bolts flying in now. Oof, just overhead of those 3rd Legion. Temple Executioners in place. Khazadum Reclaimers are moving forward, but they're not going to be enough to stand up to Temple Executioners, especially not that they're outnumbered, but something needs to stand in the way, I suppose. More units are required. Maybe the Catapult will shoot them? That has to be the idea here, surely, as the Dwarves continue to try and push downwards. Yeah, they do, but they hit some of their own men as well. Yeah, more friendly fire there. So both sides with their artillery perhaps not having the best of luck. Down come some First Legion pikes. That could be enough to make a bit of a difference, but maybe not with tons of heavy goblin spears also arriving. Although they are shaken. Morale starting to prove to be a bit of an issue. The loss of generals from the Misty Mountains here may prove to be really, really devastating. I don't know who that was. Was that this Mordor general? Could have been Froggy's general. I mean, the Heavy Goblin Spears are routing, so the catapult is having the desired impact. And like I said, routing could be the Dwarf's best friend on this occasion. Meanwhile, renewing their assault over here after routing because of friendly fire from their own artillery. The Mountain Orc Berserk is leading the way. I believe they are locked morale, which for a relatively cheap unit is really quite useful. It will help keep this assault going, certainly, and as has been said several times, that armor piercing always going to be a handy thing to bring to bear against the dwarves. Speaking of which, the whistling of these projectiles lets you know that they're crossbows going after the reclaimers, which are backing up this front line. Still trying to use those Snaga crossbows to their advantage. They still have stuff like Black Urux as well, which will be really useful. They're, up, they're made of sterner stuff than a lot of the units we've seen from the Misty Mountains so far. The Mountain Urux host, kind of equivalent to one another. Host being a little bit more defensive, of course. Down come the Guards of Khazad Dun. That arm piercing damage is certainly significant. And again, more javelins, more crossbows. Is this sort of punishment from this crossfire the sort of thing that the dwarves can stand up to for too much longer? Because yes, they're inflicting punishment, but ooh, Iron Watch of Miramir being used. I have a feeling that that is a bit of a mistake. A little bit premature there from Eclipse. Not a huge amount of attackers on this front line, and you actually hit your own men as well. Yes, you're causing a little bit of routing, but... I'm not sure. I think I would leave this to the Reclaimers for now. Wait until perhaps the Halberds were a little bit more bunched and then try it. Spears on the way forward once again. Guards of Khazad-dum. I mean, this Temple Executioner unit has wormed its way into the Catapult crew, but they're not going to last for too long. Sons of the Fallen, Reclaimers, Guards of Khazad-dum. The Black Numenorians will finally fall. They've proven to be very tough in this battle, more than anything else. Because one of those executioner units must have survived. 
the fight earlier on that Mordor really took a beating in. Could we be seeing once again the Misty Mountains, just like the last battle, are we going to see the Misty Mountains numbers be what sends the attackers over the edge? It may very well be, because this is the thing, when you look at the Misty Mountains army, it always looks like it has more left to give because of all the numbers. Individually, of course, they're, they're of low quality, but I mean, not necessarily all of them, though. Black Arooks, they're not too bad. You see here Snaga trying to do their thing in melee against these dwarves. Not really where they want to be, but they'll live and they'll make do. Throwing axes, they have anything left up here? Some First Legion, some Legion Bodyguard, Mithril Guard. The Catapult is up here. Does it have a good shot though? Isn't it just going to hit their own tower? Only one of these Catapults remains. Don't know what happens to the other two. Manganel maybe? Oof. Yeah, that... unsurprising. But fortunately Viper Action's Catapult in a better position, causing yet more routing in the ranks of the attackers. It's going to be really nasty for them. Meanwhile, Black Oryx trying to squeeze their way around the edge. Uh, but they're going to be introduced to some Sons of the Fallen and some Guards of Khazadum. There's some Goblin King Bodyguard in there as well. I mean, this is, by Misty Mountain standards, these are outright decent units. But they're going up against really good stuff from the Dwarves here, so they are still going to be thoroughly outclassed. And their general is also now in the thick of things as well. Now that the Goblin King's bodyguard is starting to be committed, the Misty Mountains committing their generals, and if he falls, WK's army will be far less resilient morale-wise, and that is going to be bad news bears for them. And the Khazadun Reclaim is going to complete a little surround here, add a bit of armor piercing, or extra armor piercing to the mix. Mm. Worrying times perhaps for the attackers. They have the numbers, they will feel, to overwhelm the defenders, but can they deploy those numbers effectively without the dwarves either slowly wearing them down or quickly demolishing them? That's the conundrum for the goblins at the moment, because it is primarily goblins that are left. There isn't much from Mordor, if anything. The ballista is still around. It's still just a ballista for the time being. Everything else I can see, and there goes WK's general. Other than the ballista, everything else I see is a Misty Mountains contribution. Blackbacks are on the front line though, so this really is a significant assault. And the catapult, like it, yeah, the catapult should be looking to shoot into this front line now. Now is the time, really, where you want to be using the Iron Watch. Because if you break up this assault with all of the quality that's on the front line from the Misty Mountains, that could be the sort of thing which puts this battle firmly in the favour. And that is nasty hits, mostly into goblins as well, definitely worthwhile. The basic Misty Mountains units are now fleeing once again. The Blackbacks seeing what was happening, trying to get to the catapult, but they were intercepted ultimately by a unit of reclaimers. The Blackbacks should actually win that fight, but the point is more that they're doing damage. And Also the Iron Watch are coming in. With that, we could be seeing the Dwarves seize the momentum in this fight. Catapult crew moving down here. I, I thought I saw Sons of the Fallen routing for a moment then, which I thought they were locked morale. Well, are they routing? No, nope, they're fighting. 14 of them. Over here, meanwhile, Sons of the Fallen and First Legion Pikes continuing to try and hold back against the slower push over here. But it's also less potentially damaging for the dwarves if something happens. Still some miners left alive in amongst that as well, again. And now they're shooting over there as well. All of these numbers are starting to rapidly dwindle for the attackers. Those Blackback Berserkers are still a bit of a problem. Those Khazadun Reclaimers are not standing up to them too well. The Catapult crew, whose Catapult is now out of ammunition, also being committed forward just to put more bodies in the way of this scary foe to try and get this catapult to retreat. Meanwhile, over here on this front line, all of these heavy goblin halberds. Victory? I somehow doubt that. With guards of Khazadum and reclaimers, if they can bust through that phalanx, I can't imagine these heavy goblin halberds will not rout. 
have already taken such a beating. And there isn't anything left over here for the Misty Mountains after this assault comes to its conclusion. Those Heavy Goblin crossbows are already broken and fighting to the death, so it really is just the out of ammo archers and the halberds that are still fighting over here and then the attack has been completely neutralized along with those blackbacks and to be fair the blackbacks are the real threat they've managed to get in and amongst the dwarven position and they need to do something about that the dwarves otherwise they are going to be in trouble heavy goblin archers are also pushing their way through now so yeah this this defensive position has fallen apart now sons of the fallen continuing to fight but this is the last roll of the dice for the attackers they're throwing everything in and hoping that it will be enough. And the dwarves, in response, will pull back to the summit of their hill. There's still that. those dwarves over there, though, which are going to win. So They may very well have to fight on two fronts still, the attackers. The dwarves with some good quality. Heavy Goblin Archers routing, as expected. Trying to take the, the hilltop on their own was never going to go all that well. The Blackbacks are going to head over there, so now we can go back down to one speed. Too little too late though, I mean the Blackbacks, the Guards of Khazadum over here are still healthy, and the Blackbacks aren't, so on this occasion with some backup, the Reclaimers should claim victory over the Misty Mountains Berserkers. They're going to try and overwhelm that position. They're also going to try and attack the top of the hill as well, though. Uh, did, I'm not sure if they organised themselves well enough here. This, could, this is a real shame. I don't really know why the First Legion Pikes were just stood out here on their own. There's not really much of an excuse for it. You don't have that many units left. Like, you, It's not difficult to organise them when you, when you only have a few remaining. Unless you're just trying to slow them down a little bit. I mean, the Iron Watcher in melee, you need to get them out. Unless they're out of ammunition. In which case, they're really just a brick of hit points and armour in melee. And they are pushing back against these attackers now. Whiter at Fearmongers is a significant thing to have in the late game, but so too is a unit of relatively healthy First Legion Pikes and Bodyguard. Or Legion Bodyguard, I should say. Have you got Alberts are routing? How much is it going to take to bring down these guards of Khazad Dunn, though? Because they're continuing to swing, continuing to hew their way through the foul creatures from the Misty Mountains. Can't help but think that if Gabilgathol was under attack like this, it's probably bad news for the Free Peoples of Middle-earth. In fact, you may be looking at the sum total of the Free Peoples of Middle-earth. <laughs> the Ballista, like I said, I don't really think the Ballista is going to be too much of a factor in the battle at this point, unless the Dwarves route this whole Goblin force and then have to advance down the stairs to attack right into it. It might prove to be fairly significant, but we shall have to wait and see. Yeah, they're just going to have to commit everything to the front line at this point, the dwarves, and hope that it's enough. The killing of more Misty Mountains generals may significantly help that, as well as the Legion bodyguard close up into melee. There's still some Sons of the Fallen. There goes one of the Misty Mountains generals. Those First Legion... I think the, the key to victory here for the dwarves potentially could be them. The White at Fearmongers are scary, but as long as the First Legion are here they can't be the dominant force that the Misty Mountains would have hoped for them to be in the late game. The Dwarves have managed to keep some of their pikes left alive. Here are some Goblin King's bodyguard. Again, the final Misty Mountains general, this. Taking his life into his hands by trying to kill off the guards of khazad -dum. Losing them could result in the routing of these units. The Fearmongers are still eager there. Ooh. There goes a Dwarven general. Hazardum. Stout of Heart, Mithril Guard still alive, 37 of them. They probably don't have three hit points anymore because we've seen them in melee already. They're presumably bloodied, some of them. Yeah, there they are. But it's still a significant unit to see left. And this is going to be it. The final 10,000 frames. The final phase. Can the Dwarves win? They need to get these pikes closer to the action. Because at the moment, too many of them are not in melee. And that is going to allow the Whiter at Fearmongers to have their way with the Dwarves that are. The mirror me the Iron Watcher Mirror must be out of ammunition, so they're in melee. They need to get closer with these pikes. They need to be braver with them. If they don't, then they may very well be handing victory on a silver platter to the attackers here. And that would be a real shame. They should still I mean the attackers should still have the numbers to win this. It's only based on the sheer quality of some of the dwarven units at the top of the hill that I'm suggesting that the dwarves could still 
come out on top, but they don't have any... If they had a couple of volleys from the Iron Watch of Miramir, things could be different. They're not going to get lucky and kill off cannon fodder's general either. The guards of Khazadum will ultimately be laid low. They've still got a few crossbow bolts. Hmm. Up here, the First Legion Pikes are now moving forwards. And they're going to try and pull back here, the attackers. They're presumably going to try and use some of their ranged units, the Ballista perhaps. And perhaps they see the fact that the First Legion Pikes on the front line, and they end up routing as a result of trying to pull their units back there. I mean, the, attack, the defenders are under no obligation to expose themselves by coming down the stairs here, if you're the attackers. So if the defenders are able to not have a rush of blood to the head and expose themselves to the ballista and the crossbows, maybe they could approach the battle like that, continue to do so, and that will be it. There goes the final guards of Khazadun. So, how will they approach this? The ballista's firing, but it's not going to be able to shoot. It's not going to be able to hit from there. I wouldn't have thought. No. So we'll have to go up to time six speed here, as the attackers will need to redouble their efforts to try and take the hilltop. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be allowed the, the luxury of being able to use their, their artillery in that manner. Very greedy of the attackers that to expect that to be the case. Now they're pushing down once again, the Iron Watch of Miramir and Sons of the Fallen leading the way. Ooh. Meteor Guard also in there. They need to get the First Legion in there though. Eclipse is being far too stingy with that unit of pikes. They need to get everything in here. Maybe he's worried about exposing them to the Heavy Goblin crossbows, but to be brutally honest, if you don't commit your full force, all you're doing is allowing the White Eric Fearmongers to, to give you the business. And that could prove to be such a crippling thing. There's no guarantee that the first, that having the First Legion on the front line here would win them this fight, but it's worth a go, surely. Your fate is guaranteed if you don't have your full strength on the front line. A bit disappointing, that. Some crossbow bolts hitting only the catapult that is right in front of them. Low IQ goblins. Victory is almost a certainty, but again, like they're allowing the fearmongers to be efficient. Lay down a bit of armor piercing damage. Do they have enough left though, the attackers? 124 heavy goblin spears are returning to the front. They do still have some high quality units somewhere, don't they? Whatever happened to that Goblin King's bodyguard? Crossbow bolts being used, here we go. Better late than never. What's going on here? They have a clear shot into this one reclaimer. He's actually holding on to his two hand axe with one hand. Most impressive. Now that the pikes are advancing down here, the Misty Mountains are in trouble, because unless they can get some ranged sh shots in there, they're in they don't have the quality. They just don't have what it takes. The Goblin King's bodyguard are on the front line, so if this continues, in its current vein, the Dwarves should win. There goes the final Misty Mountains General, and that could be the cutting blow that the Dwarves needed. Meteor Guard pulling back. Having something left in reserve, potentially, just in case things do start to go awry, but not the Pikes. At this point, your, your, their services are sorely needed. And yeah, being able to keep the black backs at arm's end, there's only 11 of them left. I mean, they've already been through the ringer. And the Goblin King's bodyguard on the front line, only 31 of them. Sands the general now as well. They do still have a morale boosting effect, I think, but the morale boosting effect as of this version of Third Age Reforged is not working. So that won't be enough to convince these goblins that are around them not to rout. Heavy Goblin Spears are already wavering, and they're not even in melee yet, but I think the attackers probably see the writing on the wall at this point. Where is the Ballista? Ah, a good position from Froggy. The thing is, if one of those bolts goes astray and hits the Misty Mountains <laughs> units, they're in massive trouble. There are the Heavy Goblin crossbows. It's really a case now of can this Ballista and those crossbows do damage quickly enough in order to be able to uh, 
give victory to them. Heavy Goblin crossbows moving in. I don't know. I mean, there's not a lot of infantry left on this side now. It's very close, this, though. I have to say, at this point, I'm rooting for the Dwarves, because if they win, it'll be through a bit of elbow grease in melee, rather than simply having some skirmishers left at the end. Ooh, and the Heavy Goblin Halberds are pulling back. Why? You need them on the front line? Oh, dear. Terrible, terrible idea. A poor choice from Cannon Fodder there, because all they needed to do was just keep the Dwarves in place for as long as possible. I'm not sure why he tried to pull them back. They wouldn't have lasted much longer anyway, but every little bit of time is absolutely vital here to allow the crossbows and the ballista to do their thing. And this unit of Heavy Goblin Spears presumably isn't going to last too long. Again, it's all about quality at this point, and the armor piercing is not going to be able to make up for the fact that these Dwarven units, they also still have those 30 Mithril Guard left at the back as well. Blackback Mountain Berserkers being overrun. They do need to worry about those Blackbacks though, because they are cutting through those pikes. Mm, come on Dwarves, you can do it. Heavy Goblin Crossbows coming back. They may need these this unit of Mithril Guard, honestly. They may need everything on the front line just to try and force these Heavy Goblin Spears apart quickly. I mean, they finally got rid of those black backs on the stairs. Oof. Only one died. Eight sons of the fallen. They need everything forward. The dwarves need to force path their units forward. I don't know, to be fair, what sort of pathfinding there is on these stairs. 64 halberds returning from routing. The ballista is now out of ammunition, which they will be extremely happy about. The Ballista crew coming into melee, all hands to the grindstone. I don't know what's going on with these Sons of the Fallen. Mr. Sneakman has fallen asleep by the looks of things. I mean, in terms of pure melee, they are correct. It's just a case of, do these crossbows have the ammunition left to turn this fight in favour? And also, this catapult is probably blocking a lot of those bolts. Not by design, but... Fate may be being kind to the dwarves here, as these crossbows continue to try and do their thing. Yeah, look at that, look. Listen to the sound of bolts on wood. Good cover there that is being offered. Heavy gobbo spears. And now the Sons of the Fallen deign to join their comrades on the front line, just in time for the Heavy Goblin Halberds to also arrive, but... It is enough to convince those heavy goblin spears, at the very least, to rout. And the ballista crew and the halberds, the only ones left, they should probably send the mithril guard down at this point just to make use of the gap to try and get into one of these units of crossbows to try and silence their machines of war. And down come the mithril guard now. Surely the halberds won't last for too much longer and melee desperate now from the Misty Mountains. The bolts hitting their targets, but still Legion Bodyguard in there, 44 of them. Multiple HP will help them survive the crossbow bolt storm better than most. And now they're going to chase those crossbows off. And perhaps they see now, the only thing left of them is to try and get into melee. And with that, I think the dwarves pretty much confirm their victory. A really good fight this, and considering this is meant to be a work in progress, it's already looking pretty good from my perspective, right from the first draft. Regardless of who goes on to win this, which I think should be the dwarves at this point, Sons of the Fallen, I'm surprised actually that these halberds haven't routed without any generals nearby, without anything of tangible quality. They've actually held on for far longer than I thought they would. And there they go. That's going to be the end. Mevan. Yeah. The other crossbows routing. I mean, at this point, there's no sense in trying to run and shoot, because you can't really do that with the crossbows. They take so long to reload and actually fire their bolts that it's not really a stratagem that could be used to try and achieve victory here. I think the other crossbow unit is probably going to return from routing as well, though. And that 
they're going to try and stand and shoot, but in so doing they're going to be torn to shreds in melee. Yeah, and I assume the other unit returned from routing, which is why the Meteor Guard are heading over there. Indeed, they did. And they are also in melee. Still quite a lot of Goblin crossbows. They were up to a little bit more in melee. Maybe they could try and surround the First Legion Pikes, but they are just going to try and shoot. Meteor Guard. Defeat is a distinct possibility, probably because of the bolts they were taking in the back. Surprising. Surprising indeed. First Legion Pikes are alive. How many Legion Bodyguard are still alive? 30. Heavy Goblin crossbows, their numbers tumble, but again, they've actually put up more of a fight than I thought they might. Pretty impressive. Mithril Guard victorious. Yeah, look at that, 99% and 99%. The difference is going to be just 1% in the end, and the defenders are going to have victory, so in the end the dwarves, able to use those defensive positions well enough showcasing what they're all about and on this occasion the numbers of the Misty Mountains were not enough, just not enough to achieve their goals and there they go a few Sons of the Fallen, a few First Legion Pikes and then the Meteor Guard and Legion Bodyguard and there we have it plenty of kills for the Dwarves as you would expect given the size of the attacking armies um, but yeah a one of those classic large scale scenarios and also this makes me feel far better about the fact that my PC did not uh, hard restart as a result of this one. So it must have been a result of something being wrong with that Khazad-dum replay, um, which is slightly strange. I've never had that happen in a replay before. Uh, I'd be interested to hear from Beastie70 about that one just to see whether or not there was anything that was going on in the game itself that was slightly off. Um, regardless, I mean, I guess it is what it is. On this occasion as well, though, the Dwarves are able to be victorious here in the far west. The Blue Mountains, the heart of the Blue Mountains, they've been able to be victorious. But for how long? I imagine Sauron at this point. If he's laying siege to the Blue Mountains like this, the rest of Middle-earth has probably already fallen. This is the last holdout. How long will the Dwarves be able to hold for? Probably not too much longer after this. But still, a moral victory, if nothing else. Having a look here, the Iron Watcher Miramir was 703 kills. The majority of them coming against the Mordor push in the eastern part of the map. A lot of kills for a lot of these units. I mean, Warriors of Khazadum getting below 100 kills, but other than that, plenty. 300 on Orc Hunters, 393 on Basic Warriors, 389 on Third Legion. Yeah, I mean, Dwarven, even the Dwarven Miners doing exceptionally well, only two of them getting below 100, but that's kind of what you'd expect from a unit like that. This army over here, again, relatively few units getting under 100 kills, 413. This is the kind of performances you need, though, from a faction without rangers. These are the kind of performances you need if you're going to win in a 5v3 scenario, which is worth bearing in mind for people who are making scenarios like this. You can't make the attackers too strong, otherwise the defenders are just not going to be able to get these kind of numbers. And on this occasion, of course, the Mordor armies were up to a little bit more, actually, than the large numbers-focused Misty Mountains ones, but they, of course, had to go down the harder route, and they were made to pay for that as well. So a very well-crafted scenario, I think, in all aspects, but Eclipse, of course, it's very used to that sort of thing. Look at that! 899 kills from the Mithril Guard, um, and they were still alive and kicking at the end as well. I mean, it goes to... Sh like, that is... it's rare to see an infantry unit climb close to a thousand kills uh, but i suppose the mithril guard are one of the very few in the game that are capable of such feats um yeah fantastic performance from them. the three hit points serving them well giving them that longevity and obviously fantastic in melee as well first legion over 500 kills showing their power as well 411 on second legion 513 on sons of the fallen and 405 just fantastic performances all around again very few units getting below 100 kills, and even then it was the basic warriors and dwarven miners. So yeah, that would be a satisfying victory to have, I think, if you were one of the khazad players, especially given how it didn't start all that well with the initial Mordor assault going quite well, but very quickly things started to turn around, and the attackers just didn't have the numbers to push their way through. They, they approached the battle largely in the right way, I think, the attackers. The dwarves were just too strong on this occasion. Um, so yeah, big thank you to Eclipse2500 for allowing me to show off this battle replay, and also a big thank you to WK as well for helping with some more Dwarven assets. Nice to see 
some uh, new bits and pieces added into the game for a bit more visual variety. And a big thank you as well. As well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Something caught in my throat there. Anyway, big thank you as well to all of the players that were a part of this battle replay as well. Very high quality one. One of, one of the favourite ones I've done in a while, actually. And that's saying something, because I've had quite a few good ones lately, but this one, um, really something quite special, I think. Um, as for what's coming up next, I think it will probably be a... We've done a few larger scale scenarios in a row now, so I think it will probably be a smaller scale one, either from Silmarillion's uh, Battle Replay Discord, or potentially I was sent a Commander-style battle, um, which was done in Reforge, which I think it will probably end up being that one, actually. And I'll explain the rules for that one um, a little bit more in depth when we see it. But it's essentially... Three, it's a 3v3, but the three players have to pick the same armies and they have to they have to effectively only look after one aspect of it. So, for example, someone does the infantry, someone does the archer. So it's interesting. You have to work together in tandem, which is, which is nice. Um, so I think it will probably end up being that one next to me. I don't know what map it could be on. It could be on the grassy plain, for all I know. Um, and that would be an interesting uh, bump down to earth after something as exciting as this. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join me for whatever is next.